Hello everyone. Now we move to Sydney and we are talking to Mehdat from Parsa um, import company. And I want, uh, as a first question, I want to ask Mehrdat to go through an introduction, then we go to our chat. Uh, hello everybody. Hello Farhad. Thanks for your invitation and thanks for your time and thanks to everybody who's watching and dedicated time. My name is Mehrdad Mahdian. I am the director and founder of Parsa Global Import. Parsa Global Import comes from a deep and long family history and a pure love for introduction for introducing other beautiful herbs and flowers in Iran. What really motivated me to start this company, it wasn't only the fact that it's a family run business, a family owned business for the last 70, 80 years, but but the fact that Almost um, 10, 12 years ago, Iran had Iran was uh, Iran was ranked number one in the world in terms of import uh, exportation and the quality of its uh, herbal and medicinal tea and uh, products. But due to some um, recent changes, it has changed and we have shrunk down to rank number 35. And that was a bit of a pity for me, especially the fact that we saw a lot of um, uh, international merchant who come to Iran and they purchase the product and they export it out of Iran without mentioning the name Iran, without mentioning the name wow. of the product and they were packaging it, they were packing it under their own name and their company and um, suddenly we saw a rise within American tea, British tea or European type of tea. And I felt a duty that we need to redeem the name and the culture and the history. So um, I left my previous engagement and studies and employment and uh, I started this over the last three years. It has been a very bumpy ride, but we are proud that we have a family of 17,000 followers on Instagram. Half of them are English speaking and half are Persian. And we were surprised by the fact that even though um, some of our followers they are Iranians, but they had no idea about this, about uh, the quality of the herbal tea that Iran produces, the quality of the product that comes out of Iran. Even they didn't know how to brew tea properly or even how to use the health benefits. And by the time they were done with the tea, all the health benefits, all the enzymes and everything uh, has been vanished. And that's why Parsa Global is proud to actually be one of the very first to introduce cold infused tea and um, using ice cubes to brew your own tea and enjoying a cup of nice tea. And um, that's why it actually made me do that. But for myself, I came to Australia in 2010. I entered the university to study biotechnology because I had a big dream of changing the world. Then I realized that the money is not that good. Then I switched to medicine. And then I found that the only job of a medical doctor is actually to be a representative of pharmaceutical companies rather than the alternative medicine. For example, I give a very bright example to your audience now. A hot topic of top of talks these days is COVID-19 coronavirus. And currently there are 42 different trials and different vaccines getting developed, all different strategies and different techniques. And we're not even sure about even one of them. And yet we are encouraging everybody to get a shot. How yeah. can you trust that? In 1990s, we had the polio outbreak and we had the polio vaccine. And one of the results of the polio vaccine was the hepatitis, hepatitis B and hepatitis C, which came out of that. And then in 2003, we had the outbreak of uh, SARS, severe respiratory uh, syndrome. Then we had MARS, then we had Ebola, and then the, it, the, the list goes on. And now we yeah, are here. It, it shows the incompetency of the pharmaceuticals and the fact that they come up with an um, experimental trial in terms of chemo. Five years later, we found that that therapy was actually false and giving people false results or even um, not even curing them. And that's why I made my focus on alternative medicine because I believe prevention is the best cure. If you live your life in a healthy diet and a healthy environment with healthy people around you, that's how you look at David Attenberg, a very famous TV presenter. He's 93 years old. 
he is still can run because he grew up with the nature. Yeah. He lived in the nature over the last 80 years. Yeah, so understand. that's my story. And now back to you. Yeah, I understand your point. Um, so um, thanks for having that great introduction. Um, so my next question would be considering the T, since we want to focus on our subject somehow. Um, what is your understanding from tea culture in Sydney? Since you live in Sydney, you have been there for a while. What is your, your understanding of the tea culture over there? Well, after water, tea is the most commonly consumed juice or drink in the world. And the tea culture in Sydney is, um, is very vast and it's very diverse. Um, you have no idea. Um, we, have a, we, we have a Korean client. And um, he told me that they make tea out of tahdig or burnt rice. So the way that the Persians make the tahdig, the South Koreans, they actually burn it fairly till it all gets black and they make a tea out of that. So wow. how gross and how crazy is that? And But comparing to Melbourne, I believe that Melbourne has a stronger tea culture than and coffee culture than Sydney and that's that's understandable because Sydney is all about making money it's all about business rather than Melbourne has a, a bit more laid-back lifestyle a bit more cultural lifestyle in Sydney the meaning of tea is just an instant tea you make it less than 30 seconds you drink it in two minutes and hush hush get back to work but oh. in Melbourne you have extra time, especially now with all these lockdowns, with all these restrictions, you have nothing to do except sitting at home. And uh, we receive a lot of orders from Melbournians and Victorians as well. So I do believe that the culture in Sydney is great, but it can be enhanced and it can be improved. OK, OK, that's great. Um, in your experience, I mean, uh, regarding tea and any herbal, have you had any time that something happened to you and it was some sort of funny story that you can share it with us? Oh, absolutely. Look, one of the funniest stories was the fact that that Korean person told me that they make tea out of tahdik and I was, what? The other fact is that... But I respect them. At the end of the day, I respect anyone doing anything. Um, this is what I mean. Cool. They enjoy it. Definitely, definitely. Yeah. Look, we had a very funny story. We had a client from Perth reached out to us and they wanted to get to know how to actually use saffron and make saffron tea and it's really crazy because the person who used to sell them saffron previously i don't know maybe because the quality was low or they didn't know they told them you have to brew the saffron in water for 24 hours after that you take the saffron out of the water throw away the water and put that on your salad and eat it with your salad and i was like what are you talking about? <laughs> what is this? Who told you that? You're actually throwing away the juice? The old exactly. Bacon. You had to drink the juice. <laughs> exactly. Especially, it's like you make black tea and you actually don't drink the black tea and you drink the leftover used leaves. And, and he was wondering why I'm not able to sleep. I'm not able to get any health benefit. And I said, you, you should think another, like, there are other ways you could try that you actually get the benefit and that was really surprising to me and um yeah that's when we showed him you could actually brew with ice or with warm water and and he loved it it was a eye-opening moment for him that's great i mean thanks for sharing that funny story um the other question that i have Mehdad, is um regarding um your business since um i got a lovely gift from you guys. I tried the tea and uh, even though I myself, as I mentioned before, I'm not into a tea bag as such, but the tea bag that I've got from you guys is different from some other tea bag that I tried before. Since some tea bag, when I put it, when we put it in the in the hot water, um, I mean, so quickly it changed the color and you say, oh, sorry, why, what is the brewing time? It's just a second or two seconds or five seconds. So it was great to see that um, similar to loose leaf, it takes time to brew. Um, do you want to elaborate a little bit more about the business that you guys are running? And I think some part of is saffron and some part is that those tea bags. Yes. Do you want to elaborate a little bit more on that one? Sure. Very good question. And thank you so much for that question. Look, 
that's it really obvious these days people show more interest in loose leaf exactly for the purpose and the reason you said unfortunately there are companies out there to make a bit of extra profit what they do then don't use the proper ingredient for example they have their own farms i'm not saying that they're not using they are using the ingredient but the fact is that they don't clean it. so they when they put the tea in their machine to chop down and make into tea bags they chop it with their stems and the brand branches so 45 percent sometimes 55 percent sometimes even 75 percent of what's inside the tea bag is just wood it's just the stems and the branches if you open up one of the tea bags you can see yourself how many tea leaves you can see and how many branches or pieces of wood you can see inside that's one reason you mentioned a, some a very very interesting fact a very important fact about instant infusions when you put the tea in the water and the color comes out instantly that's that's coloring that that is artificial coloring and some some teas don't taste good because they add preservative to the tea with all of our tea you can see we have an extra cover around it because there's no preservative we keep the we keep it in in that because there's no and keep the smelly so there's a few different things they do with us since 1963 over the last 70 years um we established a business on the basis of actually doing the right thing by the people like we we went extra mile and we have seven different certificates for our tea and saffron this is not an advertisement this is not an endorsement but it actually takes a lot of care a lot of love a lot of passion to bring a good product to your doors and as a result we are proud to be introducing good quality Persian culture and products to the world. And all of our clients, like Farhad, you wouldn't believe over the last three years that we started in, we started our headquarters in Sydney and we distribute worldwide. I swear we never had even a single complaint and complaint about our tea or about our. Uh, saffron with our tea as you see they are a slow release so you put them in a cup takes two minutes or three minutes for it to brew and when you open the lid the smell is phenomenal the taste is it is great because this is the actual herb and as i mentioned before it is very sad because we have some con artists we have some con men that they come to our country and um they they ruined the name for extra profit for example in 12 13 years ago iran was ranked number one in the world for its quality of herbal tea and herbal flowers but now we have went down to rank 32 or 35 and there are countries who have started planting and growing herbal tea in the last seven eight years and they are on the top list and even though now there are a lot of merchants they come to iran and the iranians they, they are they are located in turkey and dubai and they they buy the products they smuggle it out of the country and they take it to turkey and dubai and sell it as dubai tea or turkey tea it really saddens my heart when i see some people in australia think that the best saffron or tea comes from dubai dubai doesn't have any farming land for saffron or herbal tea it's just our people who are smuggling out of our country take it to those countries and they sell it around the world at a very hefty price as dubai tea or turkish tea yeah i'm fine Medad. Um, just to get back to um, our um, tea chat again, I want to see if you want to touch anything on um, regarding um, the brewing time, for example. If you want to touch it from yeah, some exactly. technical point, I can call it. Um, yeah. What What do you want to add on that subject? Yeah. First of all, we tell everybody you should not brew any tea in boiling water tea it's very funny fact people think that black tea all like tea green tea they are different no the tea comes from a plant called camellia sinensis 
this tea has a very long green leaves. And the fact that it and the quality of the tea and the taste of the tea and the price of the tea, it all comes from the tea master, the person who's brewing that. <clears throat> I'm not sure if you have seen the brewing machine for the tea. They're pretty big. They put the leaf there, it washes it. Um, there are people take their stems out, they make sure the only the, only the grain leaves of the camellia are in there. Even the tea that we grew up in north of Iran, Lahijan, or all those, they are camellia sentences. And the fact that if you grain tea that looks green because the leaf hasn't been brewed 100%. It, it gets brewed, if it's around 30% brewed, it's called matcha tea. And Japanese are really masters of that. Like when you, when I talk to some Japanese tea brewer, they have like a thousand square meter uh, um, garden and they, 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 they make like six or seven or eight kilos per year only. They love it. That person is just full in love with his mastery. And that's where the art happens. If it gets like around 45, 40%, uh, 45% brute, that's called green tea. If it's around 55 to 60%, that's called all line. And when it goes over 80% it becomes dark, we call it black tea. Even, have you heard of white tea? Yeah, I love white tea. White tea is when it's like around 20, 25% brute. So it's called all comes from same plant, but the, all the differences in the different type of tea, it only depends on the brewing master and the brewing technique. Exactly, and it's very important for us to look at very that those when we brew the tea. Um, we tell people, temperature. we yes. tell people, it's better to have iced tea than hot tea. There are teas you could brew even with ice. For example, even with a tea bag. If you make sure your water doesn't go anything more than 80 degrees or 75 degrees, that's perfect water temperature for tea. And there are reasons for that. There are chemicals, there are enzymes, there are minerals in the tea. And when you go over heating that, those chemicals interact. And some of the chemical bonds, they actually break down. And that's what we call molecular integrity. And the molecular integrity of those enzymes and chemicals inside the tea, they break down. If a tea has minerals and you expose it to high heat, it goes away. Like we had people, they love brewing tea over hot coal or charcoal. They leave it there for 20 minutes to brew. And when you take the tea out, it's all pure black. So the only thing you're drinking in there is just caffeine. Yeah, exactly. And it's not good for the heart. It's not good for the kidney. You no. just get a buzz for a bit. You get a bit, a bit relaxed just because of the pain and caffeine kicking in. But long term, you are damaging your stomach. It causes your stomach ulcer. It causes it causes you um, indigestion, heartburn, um, heart, kidney failure, even your liver. Because one of the reasons we drink tea is to detox our body. Like we are one of the very few advocates of uh, cold tea or cold infusion. Like for example, with our saffron, we tell everybody to brew saffron with ice, and the color is more phenomenal, and the smell is more phenomenal. And with a few, you wouldn't believe, but even with borage or golagov zaban, we tell people to brew it with ice, and it works. It works. Yeah. So one thing you need to do, you need to grind. If you have a coffee grinder or anything. Put like two grams or three grams of uh, even high viscous, even chai torch, golagov uh, zavon, borage. Grind it, put um, um, a, a, a couple of ice cubes in, pour it on top, add like 60 to 70 milliliters of warm water, like around 50, 60 degrees water, and start shaking. You see the purple color, and it comes out. Okay? Yeah. If you get a tea and it has massive amount of color, this artificial color, because every tea natural, it has just just right amount of color. Yeah, you I know? understand your point. Um, thank you so much, Merdad, for sharing those. Since we are getting a little bit out of time somehow, uh, I don't have any other question in my mind. Just I want to see if you want to add anything before our, uh, we finish our chat. Yes, definitely. Look. What I want is that 
uh, people should do a bit more education and a more reading um, about what they consume, especially as a tea. Tea is a very big market. It's a very, you find more than 400 different brands out there. But it really matters that um, the tea that you get, um, it really matters like, um, um, and what's more important than everybody is the way that you brew it. Like if you brew uh, green tea with hot water, you ruin it, the taste. You ruin it, you get so bitter, the color is not great, the smell is not good. So um, tea is really great. Treat it the same way you treat your body because all our medicine, all our um, treatment, they all come from tea. Exactly. Thank you so much, Mehrzad, for sharing your great experiences and your knowledge about tea. So um, thanks for your time. Um, if coming to Melbourne, that would be great to um, to catch up. If I come to Sydney, the same story. So um, stay safe and take care. And um, once again, thank you so much for your time. Uh, we love you. Take thank care, you so much for your time. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Take care. Bye.